Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode where we're going to discuss how effective are these surgical masks in preventing COVID-19. For all the problems that COVID-19 has caused this year, it is shocking how little we know how COVID-19 transmits between people. Now, part of the reason why is because COVID-19 as a virus itself is fairly new. It passed on from animals via an animal called the pangolin or a bat in Wuhan, I mean, this is what theories say, it doesn't really matter where it comes from, but it does come from animals. But what we do know is that the virus probably transmits in aerosol particles, in tiny droplets of water that are emitted when someone with the virus coughs or sneezes or spits in the face of someone else. And this isn't the only way it transmits, it can also last on surfaces for quite a long time, depending on the type of surface. Now, if you're someone healthy and you go to that surface, you risk yourself, you touch it, you put that surface on your face, then you're risking getting the virus. But it is definitely the case that getting COVID-19 is mostly due to respiring the virus into your airways. And after that happens, eventually the virus particle can get into your bloodstream and then it will cause a systemic issue all over your body. But where do surgical masks come in? Do they help at all? Well, surgical masks have actually been debated around its effectiveness for even up to five years before the coronavirus even happened. So. First of all, to begin with, we never knew if surgical masks were even effective for surgeries, whether they were useful at all. What we do know is that they probably reduce the probability of a surgery patient from getting an infection that comes out from the respiratory system of the people performing surgery. Your body has natural barriers to protect itself from getting viruses, bacteria, and other pathogens. And obviously when you cut yourself open, you have eliminated some of those barriers and you need something to prevent someone one else from giving you an infection. And that's where surgical masks came in. People thought that they were better than nothing. Now, usually these surgical masks are basically made of the same material that is used to make paper. And there's about three layers of them that go into every mask. So if you can imagine wearing three papers on your face, it's not too dissimilar from that. Now, what is key is how the mask is woven. The mask is woven together in a way that doesn't allow any air to escape besides the sides. So when you wear this mask, there is a less probability of you getting the virus going through the front part. Obviously, this isn't the case for 100% of any particle. It is still paper and it's basically still translucent. You can still see through it. And its effectiveness has always been debated by surgeons and doctors around whether it should be used in surgery or whether the NHS can afford using these masks. Yeah, the NHS is in a pretty bad condition in the UK. But what the surgeons eventually decided is that it's better than nothing and probably they should continue wearing the mask because it still creates some sort of barrier. You can think of these masks as basically a wall with many, many holes in it. If you throw a ball on that wall, there's still a chance that the ball might end up going through the wall to the other side, but there's still a chance that the ball might hit a part of the wall that doesn't have a hole in it and will bounce back. So what the masks are actually intended to do is to prevent someone from coughing, sneezing, and emitting a blast radius from their face into someone else's face or nose. And obviously that blast radius is gonna cause someone else to potentially get COVID-19 if you have COVID-19, and it's just there to prevent mistakes from happening. This mask cannot prevent COVID-19 if you don't follow other common sense procedures. If you go to the house of someone that has COVID-19 and you wear this mask, thinking that you're not gonna catch it, you are foolish and you might end up catching COVID-19 and thinking to yourself, well, I was wearing a mask, where did this come from? So you have to really be careful when you're wearing these masks because it can give you a false sense of security. And when you do wear this mask, you also have to know that having a beard, even as small as mine, you can actually end up making the mask less efficient. What does that mean? Well, if you wear this mask on a beard, especially a massive beard, you're gonna end up losing a lot of air from the bottom here. The other problem is that if you don't fasten the mask from your nose area, then you're potentially ending up losing air from the top. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you have COVID-19, you're now spreading it from the side, not from the front. Now, this mask compared to other masks like N95 masks or other masks like P100 masks are basically ineffective. If you look at other masks that are certified, then these masks are basically not effective at all. 
the other masks that do have certifications have to pass rigorous procedures to get to your hands with that logo on it. So if you're looking for a mask that is effective because you need it, because maybe you are sensitive to COVID-19, then make sure you're on the lookout for certifications for masks that say that they can eliminate 95% of particles because although the particle size of the virus is very small, it's in the nanometer scale, most likely the virus will be able to pass through any barrier that you put on your face, but the virus we know can get transmitted through aerosol particles, tiny water droplets that come out of your system and the virus can be attached on those or it can be attached on dust and transmit itself. Now those are the particles that we're mainly concerned about when we're talking about masks and that is why you need to choose a mask that works. Don't just build your own mask using paper or cotton or something else at home uh, because it's not really going to work. Even these surgical masks have been debated for several years before coronavirus even happened and that wasn't even necessarily for viruses. We were talking about larger particles like bacteria. Are they even effective against those. The second thing is these surgical masks tend to accumulate a lot of particles on the other side of the surface. So if you wear the mask the other way around, upside down, and I have seen people wear it upside down, then you're potentially making it even worse if you're wearing a mask that is old. Now there's a whole movement in the US about how people don't want to wear masks anymore. They're sick of the government telling them what to do and they say they want to execute their freedom of speech, their freedom to do whatever they want as long as it doesn't hurt anyone. And apparently that involves not wearing masks. And you know, I don't personally care about that movement, whatever that might be for, but it has certainly become political. Now the police around the world have certainly made it a point to tell you what to do these days and that's probably why it's become a political statement whether to wear a mask or not. Now one thing we do know is that when big mask Biden comes into office in the US you can probably expect even more stronger laws that say that you need to wear masks everywhere you go. I hope you found this episode useful. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to this video and hit that notification bell. I hope you have a lovely day.